everyone, Sophia here from my great challenge. Welcome back to my channel and maybe the final episode in my entryway makeover. I went to the Home Depot yesterday. Today is Sunday, by the way. It's Valentine's Day and here I am doing projects. <laughs> it's a made up holiday anyway. But that's neither here nor there. So yesterday I went to the Home Depot and I purchased stuff to finish this. Um, I am unsure as to whether I purchased the right stuff. I wanted to buy a threshold to go from this area to the next area, my living room, and find something that was about this wide. I couldn't find anything um, that would go with the vinyl or this wood. For some reason, there was no threshold. Everything that I found was about this thick or this wide rather. And it looked more like transitions, you know, like if you have carpet to um, wooden floors than anything else. So I don't know if it's gonna work. We're gonna try and we'll see if it works. About three length in case I cut wrong, you know. Again, if I have, um, I'm checking on the dog. What is he doing? What are you doing? The sheep, what are you doing? What are you doing? Okay, never mind, sorry. Um, about three lines in case I cut wrong and if it works and I have extra I'll just send it back to the Home Depot and get a credit um, for my next project I tend to do that a lot so I'm going to start with the gap that I have here on this side on the front door and then the closet because these are the ones that are, I believe will work the one that I'm not sure if it will work is the threshold between this area and the living room. So let me take the camera off the tripod and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Oh, we're looking a little pale. Um, but anyway, so about these, you see that? Okay, let's read it. What does it say? Um, Multi-purpose reducer. You see, that's what I think they are. They are a purchase transitions, okay? Um, and basically, oh, you're not going to be able to see that. I, I got to open it. Hold on. Okay, so it's pretty much the same color. Not exact. I couldn't find the exact color. It comes with a track that you can remove. I haven't watched any video on how to do this, by the way. I'm going to have to figure it out on my own. Lord have mercy. <laughs> so there's a track. Um, and I believe what you do... I'm probably gonna say something horribly wrong, but I think that you basically nail this or screw this into the floor, right? And then you put that piece over it and lock it in place so that you don't have to screw into this part right here. So it looks neat. And underneath it, you can see that there's room for said track, but it's a little flexible, so I'm gonna move it this way. Okay, this is what it looks like. Come on, focus, there we go. This is what it looks like. So there's one area that's lifted up a little bit and the other one that is straight. So we're gonna see. Um, obviously, I gotta cut it to size. I'm gonna do that first. I'm gonna cut it to fit into the closet and we're gonna see whether or not I need this. I don't have any problem screwing it in directly into the uh, vinyl because you know it's the closet transition the one here at the front i'm not sure it looks like i'm gonna have to use this but again it's not very wide it's kind of narrow uh, which is the opposite of not very wide anyway <laughs> i'm being wordy as usual um so because it's kind of narrow it's not really let me show you so because it's kind of narrow it's not gonna cover the entire area here. It's only gonna cover about to here, which is fine because up to here is this floor. However, if you remember, the threshold transition that I had before was much um, wider, right? And this part of the wood here is very damaged. So I would have this part of the wood here exposed. So I'm not a fan of that. And I think that what I'm going to end up doing is add a little bit more of this onto here. 
which means that I would have the threshold closer to here, but then it would be inside this room. I hope you understand my dilemma here with regards to this area. So I got to do the other two first and see how it works to see if I can kind of figure out a way to do this area here. Uh, my issue is pieces of wood, old wood that are kind of damaged. Um, I don't know. I really don't know what to do with this area. But anyway, let's move forward. We're going to start with the closet. So, let's see. Uh, I'll need this right now. I'm trying to think. I have enough um, room underneath here, so that's fine. Um, let's measure it. Measure and cut. I'm going to put it here. And a quarter. A little bit under 27 and a quarter. So let me cut it at 27 and a quarter, a little bit under. Um, and then I'm gonna see if I can put it tension directly onto this and not worry about it. So my understanding here is that uh, there's a part that's, wow, this is static. I'm getting all the uh, talks here on it. Okay, so there's a part that goes down, right? And then there's a part that's a tiny bit higher. So I'm going to put the higher over here because that's where it's higher, right? I'm just going to put this here like this and tap it in. I did it a little bit high, um, longer on purpose so that I can create a tension. Right. And of course it's peeling paint. Okay, so it's working. It's working. Um, let's close the door. I think I'm gonna have to screw it in. All right, and I can close the door. All right, so I have one transition, but I'm going to screw it in. And what happens if I put the track? I I'm not certain it's gonna work. Yeah, I'm just going to put one screw here and one screw there. I got to remeasure. And over here, I have to angle it. The thing is not straight, so I have to angle it here and I have to do a full length. Okay, I got to redo it. So this time around, I did it a little bit longer and I notched the side here. So this is supposed to go this way. Where is my camera? Okay. So, but it's fitting. Um, ugh, I messed up all the paint here. I'm gonna have to finish it with paint. All right, let me get the drill and self-tapping screws. I'm going to put a screw here and a screw there, and I'll have the transition done um, for the closet. It's not hard to do, it's just that I wasn't all that super, super straight to begin with, so I got this done. All right. At least it looks better than having a gaping hole. So I really don't like the idea of screws, but I tell you what I can work with is liquid nail. I'd rather do liquid nail. And 
another rookie mistake. It's glued to the floor. Can I close the door? <laughs> Can you imagine? Ah, I closed the door and I can close it because it's good. Okay, it's good. All right, nothing to worry about. So this is done. It's a Rube Goldberg initiative here, but it's glued, so it's not gonna go anywhere. All right, I gotta do the. Um, all right, so before I get to the front door, I'm putting two big weights, so I have 20 pounds altogether on that uh, transition bar right now, just to weigh it down and make sure the um, glue really adheres. But so far, so good. Um, it works, and it's the same color, so I don't have any problem with the color. I thought it wasn't gonna look good, but it's the same color. So, moving right along. So, for the front door, um, you can see right here that I have this gap, right? And the only solution is to put this piece, well, actually this one, um, right here, okay? But I'm trying to figure out a way to get it to hold, um, and lo and behold, underneath here, you'll see, I'm going to remove this because I have to move it up a little bit. Not by much, but I do have to move it up. Okay. All right, so I have a little, here, you see it? I have a little groove in here. So I'm going to place the high part of this inside this groove. Like this. And I gotta hammer it in. just a tiny bit like this so it still covers the draft and then this covers the gap that's what I gotta do all right so this goes this way again I'm going to use the um, glue and then I'll place this back on. So for the front, uh, what I've decided to do was cut a thinner um, piece right here that I'm going to add right so it's going to move this forward a little bit and once this piece is in then I can add my threshold and it will basically stop right here where the um, heater is the baseboard and yes it will be a little bit um, off into the living room but at least I can hide all of the damaged wood that I have here. Uh, let me see if I can show you. Here we go. Here, can you see that? I have a lot of uh, little pieces of wood that were added and stuff. I mean, this is old, old stuff. Ideally, I would have to remove all of this and put new planks, um, but I doubt I would ever be able to match this particular wood and again I was told that this is red Carolina pine um, I don't think it's pine I think it's oak there's no knots anywhere <laughs> so I don't know what he came up with why he, he said that um, I, I don't think it's pine I think it's oak but whatever so I'm gonna put that in uh, so I'm gonna put that in and we'll see what happens now I know there's a level problem I know that. Um, that this area here is a little bit higher than the other. So 
I'm afraid that might be a problem, but we'll see. Let's do it this way. So it took me a while to figure this out, but this is the piece that was right here. And this piece right here is not interlocking with the one. That's the wrong edge. I was supposed to use uh, the other edge. So I got to get another plank and replace this one so that I can interlock them properly and they won't shift. That's the reason why you don't want to use the cut edges on your seams you only want the row and cut edges on the outside I didn't realize that when I installed it that I picked up the wrong um, the wrong edge huh so this is the right one right here but I need the one that interlocks there so I got to open the other box that's the reason why I bought two box I knew it was gonna happen uh, so that I can install this one and then I'll be able to lock this in So once this is in, and I have a problem with level, okay, now you're in, all right, now this, I will put the track in because I can screw directly into the wood, and this piece here will hold it in place like this, and this will go right here. See that? So that will be the transition from here to here. And then all I have to do is clean up the wood right here. All right, so this is in. Let me cut a piece of track, um, which is this. I gotta see how long, well, let's do, um, that was 32 and three quarters, so let's do 32. And then I'll plug that in and this just gets popped in directly. So what I'm doing right now is installing the track and once the track is on you can pop this in. You just hammer it in and then it just gets lodged into the glue which is much better to be honest than the glue. Um, so I'm going to see if I can do that on the two other pieces and put the track on. I was trying to avoid doing it because I don't know if I have the right subfloor. Oh. Oh. All right, let me go get the drill. <laughs> I'm trying to cut corners here. Track is in, now I have to cut a piece that's the right size and remember this goes on the other side. You'll see it once I'm done. So I gotta cut that piece and then when I'm ready to put it in, I gotta make sure that this is really, really in, inserted so that when I press this in, it's going to lift it but keep, keep it locked. Hopefully, um, the problem is that this piece should really be a much wider piece. It's kind of barely cutting it in terms of getting it locked in, um, but we'll see. Okay, so I gotta cut a piece like this that does the whole length, and then when I come back, I'll hammer it into this track, um, and then I'll see if I can do one, another track, for the front. I'm not worried about the closet, um, but I gotta try to see if I can do one in the front. So what I did here is um, really push this in, the, uh, the last piece. All right, so I'm gonna close the door. This should not affect it. 
close the door and get my piece that I just cut. It's this one. Right. Which part is going down? It's this. All right. And this goes in here. I gotta get it into the groove. I'm getting really frustrated um, there's a reason why this is not working out and I got to think about it I got to think why is it not working the only thing I can think of is that maybe the edge of this needs to be against this so that it locks it in place so that way it's not moving so this is what I'm gonna do I'm going to reverse my screws are you getting frustrated with me I think what I gotta do, oof, you're hot. Come on. And I think I gotta use the edge of the track to hold that last piece in place so that it doesn't shift. Okay, let's try it again. Now, this piece here, the last piece is being held by the little lip. It's not a big lip, but it's holding it. figured it out <laughs> all right <sighs> all right done Whew. I've learned I've learned something today all right so now I do still have a little bit gap here um, that's gonna get cleaned first but this is done. Now what I'm going to do is see if I can put um, a track over there. Because I'm concerned that over time, as I open the door, where well, nothing's going on, it's not moving. It's pretty much glued in. So I'm going to leave it like that. Okay. And then over here, not going anywhere either. Okay, so let me um, get my brown putty. I'm going to clean this up, get my brown putty, and fill in the edges. But I got to be honest, I pretty much had it for today. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is uh, tomorrow I'll finish with the crown molding or the molding, whatever you call it, um, the three-quarter round or quarter round, I never know how to call it. Um, so I'll finish that. I'll clean up for now. I'll finish that. So... When I come back, it will be tomorrow for me. Same video for you. Um, but it's done. This was not easy. But I figured it out, you see? And the, uh, the seam is perfect. So, the last plank that you have has to be flushed with the track. You'll notice, do I have a piece of track here? Hold on. I'm making mistakes so you don't have to. Um, the track doesn't really have a lip here on either side. 
but you have to flush your last piece against it and hammer it in so that it's really snug against this. And then you put your um, threshold, your transition piece. Because if you have a space, let's say the last plank, well, you know what, let me show you that way. I do have a piece of plank, yeah. Okay. Because if you have uh, your last plank like this, it will lift. But you, so you have to put it against your track and then it won't move, all right? So I figured that out on my own. Could have figured it out on a video, but I'm telling you, this is what I've learned. So let me clean up and then I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so I'm back. Uh, it's uh, Monday, President's Day. Uh, boy, did I get frustrated yesterday <laughs> with this? Is it that's the problem? Like when when I I tried to cut corners, I didn't want to use the rail, which is really ridiculous. But that's because my understanding was that the rail was actually raising the thing, and I didn't want to do that. But not at all. The r rail actually goes inside the groove. So problem fixed. I did the rail on the um, side here, and I did the rail on the front door, but I didn't do the rail on the closet because um, it's glued in, <laughs> but that's all right. Um, I'm learning, you see, that was the reason why I'm doing this project. I want to learn how to do this. And a big conversation ensued yesterday about the green carpet. And boy, is he not backing down. <laughs> He's not backing down. <laughs> and the issue is not the color, and he understand the carpet is disgusting. Um, but he just wants carpeting. So I was like, okay, let's get the best of both worlds. How about we split the room in two? When you come up the stairs from the bedroom, you get flooring. And then when you look at the side where there's the bed, there's carpeting and a divider in between with one of those dividers. And he says, yeah, that could work. <laughs> <laughs> 10 years to get to that. <laughs> it took me 10 years, almost 11 actually. Um, so I may end up doing that and I'm okay with it, you know, because I can change the carpet to something gray or, um, you know, light beige, whatever, and do this floor, this color floor um, on the other side of the room, easier to clean, and then finish the same floor into the bathroom. That would look nice, right? Next thing you know, I'll change the countertop in the bathroom and we'll, we'll, we'll finally get to something decent upstairs. Okay, so today, what am I doing? Um, this, I'm doing the uh, rounds, um, and I never know if those are Quarter rounds, three quarter rounds, they look like quarter rounds. Um, so I'm doing the rounds today. Um, angles, I don't know, we'll see. Um, that shouldn't be too difficult, but um, once I'm done with the rounds, then it's cock and the white cock and the brown cock. Let me show you what I'm talking about, hold up. Because no project goes without, um, you know, having to buy all of the tools and whatever. This is the wood laminate and vinyl putty and the bang, 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 you're hearing the background is Edward on the treadmill. Um, wh what is he doing, like 10 miles per hour up there? I don't know. Okay, fills gaps and nicks um, in dark brown. There you go. So I hope I have enough. Uh, but anyway, let me show you what I did yesterday as a recap and then we're gonna start doing the molding. So here goes, um, this is done and it's not going anywhere. So it is on a track, but again, um, it's the weirdest thing. It is so, look at that, it is so static. I think it's because it was in plastic wrap. Um, this area here needs to be clean. It's not a big deal. I will use the uh, putty to fill this crack here. Actually, I'll probably fill all this crack there. Um, and then there was this area here that kept on popping out. And I realized that's because there was a level difference. So what I did 
and I didn't show that on camera because cursing was um, <laughs> going on. Uh, I removed the whole thing and I put a piece of cardboard underneath this and it lifted it up a little bit so I was able to join them. Um, and over here on the front um, I also put it on a track and you saw me move the uh, sweeper, um, the sweep bar up a little bit. So I don't have, you can't see the light, can you? Don't mind the dust, okay? Um, I'm still in the middle of, well, I don't have any excuse. This dust in my house. So anyway, uh, you see there's no more daylight. And then in the closet here, uh, the other one has been installed. So I'm gonna start with the corner over there quite around. Um, I have a crack here that's gonna have to be um, filled up. I should have put two layers, that's okay. So I need to do one going from here to there and one going from here to there and I'm going to do a tiny one here, if it fits, because I have the corner of the door here. Um, and then I'll do one over there that's gonna go underneath. I'll probably start with this one, because that's easy. And then same thing here. I'm gonna do one here and one here, and then I have to figure out what I'm gonna do there, because you see, this is not even, all right, this is a 90 degree angle, but you can tell that, do you, can you hear Edward on the treadmill? <laughs> it's ridiculous. Anyway, uh, I have to do one here. So technically I should be doing like a whole bunch. No, I'm gonna go straight from here to there and fill the rest with putty. And then we'll see what happens with that little gap that I have here. And then we'll figure out what we're gonna do over there. And then over here, same thing. I'll just do one going this way and another one going that way underneath. And then we'll fill up the gap um, with caulk. And that's it, all right. Look at that, needs painting, don't you think? I'm telling you, the whole house, I could spend my entire lifetime fixing this house and it would still not be completed. Um, let's get started. Okay, so the next one I'm gonna do uh, what's called an inner corner because on this side it's gonna be out of corners. The best way to remember how to do um, the angle is to basically you'd go do, put your pen this way, right? And it gives you a visual, right? Because the angle's gotta be right there. So you're doing an angle on this one, the angle is gonna go this way. And on that one, the angle is gonna go this way as well. So I have to, I'm using my Jepidum in catalog. <laughs> That's the only piece of white paper I found um, to draw it. Okay. And my maximum length is here for this piece right here. So let's say I need five inches. I'm not gonna count five inches to here and then cut it because then it won't work, right? So I gotta cut it all the way up to five inches and then cut the angle here. And the best way to do that is just to cut the angle on the long length and then cut the straight edge. I don't know if that makes sense. Because if I'm just cutting a five inch, I'm dealing with just a little five inch piece, and then I gotta struggle to try to figure out how I'm gonna cut the angle on that. So start by cutting the angle on the long length, and then you cut to five inches, hoping that makes sense. So I got my longer piece, right? So now from here to there, I need uh, whatever length I need, which is probably five inches. Okay. So that's in. So of course there'll need to be some cork here. So now I just gotta do this one. And you see that's the problem, having houses with all sorts of different angles and uh, constructions and you know, old houses, okay. This goes here. Alright. 
not gonna lie, I am pretty proud of myself. <laughs> if only you know how many cuts I had to do, but anyway, this reminds me of Tam Graham, that uh, uh, Japanese puzzle thing that I used to do when I was a kid. Okay, so I have one that goes here, watch this now, one that goes there, and the hardest one to put together was this one. Um, because it has to be cut this way, but they're not from the same... It's, it's hard to explain. But anyway, it goes right here. <laughs> it, was, it was hard to get the angle. So now, because I have the door jam here, that's, uh, you know, weird. Uh, very obviously, I'm going to have to fill this up with uh, putty and again I'm not doing it all the way up to here because I have the door and then this part here also has uh, a door frame thing so it's gonna stop there and this will be filled out with the brown putty um, but this one is done and I'm pretty darn proud of myself and it completely hides this so I'm gonna go ahead and glue it um, putty will um, finish up the whole thing and I think it's gonna look pretty good well at least it looks finished and it's done um, it's done. <laughs> There's nothing else I can say. The only thing I need to do is paint um, the moldings. Um, and I know it kind of looks silly with that little S over there and quarter thing, but at least it covers the angles um, and it holds them in place. Now I tried that brown um, putty thing. I don't know if you can see it over there and over here. Hate it. So I stopped. Uh, it's too dark. It's not a matching color at all. It was supposed to be the one that goes with this. That's the one they recommended, but it's too dark. So I'm just going to leave it. I put enough to cover the white that was underneath it, but otherwise it's done. So to recap, what did I do? I covered um, and patched the hole from the mailbox that was over there. Painted everything, filled in all the cracks. Um, over there, I installed chrome molding all around. Repainted everything a brighter yellow. Uh, did all the cracks inside the closet. Uh, painted the inside of the closet. Um, insulated the floor. Installed the floor. And then installed the transition pieces. And today, and yesterday basically I finished off the whole thing by doing the molding on the floor and it's looking really cool we like it oh and then the curtain I forgot to mention the curtain so here's my new entryway um, and I'm pretty darn happy with myself not too bad for somebody who doesn't have um, a huge amount of skills I've learned how to do this. It's making a difference. That was the goal, to make a difference in terms of the temperature um, in this room. Now eventually this door here will have to be replaced. And hopefully when they do it, they don't destroy everything I just put together. I think they just... Um, well, the door itself is not a standard size. That's the problem. So I need to have somebody come in and measure it. And they're probably not going to have to redo the whole frame but they will have to take out um, you know, parts of it in order for me to install a new door. And uh, I would really like to have a door that has a storm door with it, so a double door basically, so that I can uh, leave the front door open, lock the glass panel, and um, really bring in light into um, the house. I'd like to have a glass door. You know, this is like what, a six panel? Right? I like to have um, not an oval, but like at least a half panel. That would be very nice. But I don't know how insulated they are. It would kind of defeat the purpose, right? 
<laughs> if I bring in a new door that has a glass panel and it gets really cold in here again. Now, is there a big difference in temperature? Yes. Is it um, a huge difference? I would say yes. But is it like you can hang around here and not feel the cold? No, it's always going to be cold. It is not part of the house. Just remind it, this is not part of the house. This is technically an addition that is sitting on top of the porch um, and that doesn't have an actual foundation. If you look underneath the porch, it's just a stack of bricks holding this area, you know, four stacks basically. So as much as I'm trying to, you know, get it insulated, we got the walls insulated with the blown in insulation. I had them install um, insulation at the bottom. Plus I did the floor and I fixed all the cracks. It's making a difference, but it's not like the temperature in this room is the same one in the living room. Um, if I leave the door open here, if I leave this door open, then the temperature gets to be the same. But for the most part in the winter, we'll leave this door closed anyway, um, because there is a difference. But the biggest advantage of doing what I did is that it will stop this pipe right here from freezing because it did once and we had to repair it we had to actually get a plumber to do this because that's one thing i don't know how to do i don't want to mess with this plumbing electricity too but definitely not plumbing um so the pipe burst in here there was water everywhere uh, and i guess that was one of the reasons why he removed the original floor here and put tile instead because the pipe tended to burst often now, I'm pretty sure it will never happen again because it's insulated on the outside, underneath, and the floor. So that's it for me. That was uh, winter project number two. The only thing I have to do is uh, touch up with paint here and there. I'm not gonna film that. I'll do that sometimes during the week and I'll go get my uh, little bucket of paint and just a tiny brush and, you know, cause I have I already have a scratch right here. <laughs> Um, but that's really all I have to do and um, I'm pretty happy with myself. I just don't like that brown putty at all. That was a mistake. Won't, won't make that mistake again. Um, but anyway, okay, it's a mess in here. Shouldn't show that. <laughs> anyway, I'm done with this video and this series. I will see you um, next time for winter project number three, hopefully in the kitchen. And. Um, that will be it. So I hope you enjoyed this project. I hope you like it. And um, yeah, that's it. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe right here. Meet me and find me at My Great Challenge on Facebook and Instagram. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching you guys. Bye. Hey, it's me. And guess what? Click that thumbs up if you really like this video. Thumbs down twice if you didn't. You can also share my video if you really, really liked it or save it to watch later. Also, you can subscribe to my channel, but don't forget to click that bell button so you are always notified when I post a new video. Thank you for watching.